Hi, AJ Hartley here, novelist, Shakespeare professor, baby metal fan, and we have new music. Shingeki, Divine Attack. Obviously only listened to it a few times because um, it only just came out, but let me do my little walkthrough and I hope you like it and find it interesting. At least the song's good, right? So. <laughs> it's been a long time <laughs> it's been a long time yeah it, it, it's so great to hear that sound that combination of that voice and those heavy grinding guitars and uh, of course we're right from the start in the video which obviously it's not a, a conventional music video or a performance video but it's a video that constantly foregrounds the digital quality of what has been produced therefore referencing what the other one is this sort of alternate universe digital dimension um I, i'm not certain where this will fit into the sort of larger uh story of of what this is supposed to be this sort of alternate history but yeah i mean we see it all the time the constant sort of fragmenting of the image to sort of remind us that what we're seeing is somehow in some other uh computerized dimension which is in some ways reminiscent of Kingslayer or something like that I missed this Let's do the lyrics first. Okay, so Nagai Yoru ga Semaru. A long night draws near. I've seen a number of different translations online already, uh, which is awesome. You know, people putting up the transcriptions and 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 translations. Some of them um, are, are more accurate than others. It seems to me. Uh, I'm working mostly from Capable Paramedic via Funny Toss and my mo my Japanese mother-in-law's translation. I set her to to transcribe it and I've sort of cobbled those and made a few sort of minor modifications of, of my own but yeah so um a long night draws near so I guess she has a a turbulent wind is blowing tsuamono tachi koko ni tsudoi um so strong people or warriors gather here um, so, uh, uh, capable paramedic points out that in, in this combination, it's not just that they're, they're strong, but that they are fighters. I think, kokoro no yaiba o motte, hold the, the blade of your heart or your heart blade, in, heart blade in hand is, a, is one way to put it. Um, and, and we've seen this before in baby metal, this image of the person as blade or the, the heart as this, um, emblem of, of strength and sort of fine cutting ability. You know, the image of, of the warrior as blade is a common one throughout v various cultures. I think in, in this case, it's also an image of, of personal strength. So it's not a literal sword in, in hand, right? And, and obviously this is a battle song, but it's a battle song which, like is often the case with baby metal, doesn't emphasize physical combat per se it's not about swords and what have you it's about the sort of mental toughness engaged in this metaphorical battle right <laughs> It's just so good to hear this. Tomoni uh, chikai, tomoni sakebi. So uh, swear or, or make an oath together and then shout, kokoro uh, kara tabi o hajime o. Begin your journey here. This is what this is where it starts. The journey starts here. Tatareta nigemichi wa. When the the escape route or the 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 route the the retreat option is cut off, and um, Yabureta seijaku when the silence is broken, tataka toki ga kita. The time has come to fight. So when there's nowhere to go, 
I'm assuming it's us who can't retreat, right? One of the questions of the song is exactly who's doing the attacking here, right? It's called a divine attack. Are we the ones doing the attacking or are we preparing ourselves to be attacked? Um, and, and that to me is not entirely clear and it slightly changes the way that we think about the song. Um, I, I think of this as having been sort of encircled or, or uh, surrounded or, or pressured in other ways, constrained. Now we're making our breakthrough attack, right? If you think of something like um, you know, the riding forth from Helm's Deep in The Lord of the Rings or something like that, right? It's a, it's a, an act of aggression, an act of attack, but it comes out of um, being sort of pushed to the brink. And, and this is, and we're now taking action in order to uh, try to break the, the, the assault that we are the victims of, right? Does that, I, I think that's the way I'm seeing it. So we're saying, you know, we're trapped in a sense and when the silence is burning, it's like when we when we give the word maybe then it's time to fight um and uh kakagero konnoteo raise your your hands so in this in this moment we raise our our arms in, in every sense of that term right <laughs> pause it there partly there are a number of images in in the in the video that i think are worth talking about um one of them is the image of the opening door which we see a number of times and to me this is obviously it's reminiscent of moments in key baby metal shows from the past particularly road of resistance that sense of parting and i think that you know one of the the line that we just said was sort of raise your hands but there's going to be a moment later on where we talk about using your hands to break through the wall and to me that's really reminiscent of that sort of iconic sue gesture where she parts the crowd in order to sort of make a a way through so there's something very self-referential about this and I, you know i think that the, the the emphasis of the song's emphasis on now is the time and again this is very road of resistance but now is the time is also self-referential because it's about their their re-emergence after being sealed and you know we can quibble about the extent to which this is them and this is an alternate version of them but in real terms in fan terms this is the return of baby metal it may not be the return of baby metal in the form that they will be back when we do something other than this other one concept album maybe there will be a return to some other form of baby metal but for the moment it's still a return of sorts right albeit a digital one and in a sort of slightly different mode and i think that there are a number of moments in the video that remind us that there is continuity from the old baby metal into this one right and we as i said the the opening of the door which to me is also really reminiscent of of sort of key iconic moments in sort of uh fantasy and medieval epic battle movies i think particularly of aragorn coming into um helm's deep which i just referenced which i think is a really good analogy this is our hope coming through those great doors and there's even a, an earlier reference i think in kenneth branagh's first shakespeare movie of course i have to reference shakespeare in his first shakespeare movie henry v which is a late 80s movie yes i think and it's a similar thing you see that that the, the opening of that sort of the door and the comparatively small figure who's made special by the scale of the doorway and the light behind the doorway. This is a real sort of iconic, visual iconic way of sort of cueing in, this is the returning hero or the, the, our future, right? Um, the other things that I think come up in, this, in the video that are, are emblematic, uh, we see the winged angel we, and we've seen wings before in the Amore video. We've also seen a figure that looks very similar to the statue that we see here in the sort of the, the Virgin Mary image that we, you know, goes back to those early concerts and that that viral gimme chocolate 
video where we see the huge statue of the Virgin Mary behind. And that's an image of, of femininity, of course, but the wings here give it power and transform one kind of icon into something more. It's, a, it's an angel. It's also a Valkyrie, right? It's a warrior who's going to sort of fly into... Um, into combat. And the, the other thing I was going to say is that the, those early images of um, of the digital uh, frame, we see, you know, that image of Moa as if she's sort of trapped inside the screen, right? Trying to sort of push her way through, trying to come out into the world. And then we move into the bulk of the song, which is then what it's about. It's about breaking out of that and re-entering the world. So again, I think it's very sort of self-referential. The time has come, stand up. Again, this very road of resistance, right? Susume egaite aishitae. So advance towards the tomorrow that you envision, right? This version of the future that you have imagined. Um, that's what we're fighting for. So we're, we're moving towards that. We're taking control of our own destiny and pushing forward into the future. Time to go your way. Kiri hirake michi kono tere. So opening the, the road or the way with your hands. Um, uh, capable paramedic translates it, I think, really interestingly as, as sort of cut your way through. Use your hands to sort of cut your, your path, right, to clear the path. Again, this is a very familiar baby metal image. And again, it invokes that, that road of resistance parting, right, that we're using our hands. Now, the, the one thing I would say also, though, is that in road of resistance, it's Sue who parts the way. Now we're being involved in it. And I think this is that sort of one other one extension of the the singer's position to include the audience and the fan base right that, that this is us as a collective making our stand and that we become warriors with her i would say them but the backing vocal is hard to pick out here so without choreography moa's presence is is somewhat minimized um, maybe when we see a live performance of this that will that will change but at the moment the song is defined by sue's voice and the instruments that's the way i feel anyway <laughs> that really grungy bass heavy guitar it, to me it is emblematic of, of this song and it pushes us I think towards something like you know Kingslayer the Bring Me the Horizon song but it also it's also emblematic of, of breakdowns in other songs like GJ ironically I think that has that same sort of real earthy bass heavy song and it's part of what makes this one different from Road of Resistance I'll talk about more uh, to, I'll say more about that in a minute. But again, the iconography of the of the image is, you know, moving up the steps towards these sort of temple structures and things like that. also say you know the images of them on the horses this is you know the cavalry mark the, the uh, it, icon that we've seen you know released over the last few months that um which is just cool you know um but also i think also reminds us of, of road of resistance where the, the choreography is clearly supposed to be like a cavalry charge of some sort so there's a sort of certain amount of overlap between these two songs i think um hakan night negai demo even if your hope is fleeting e even if we don't have a lot of hope even if we e even if the possibility of holding on to hope is is slim and um saramini somutai mo even if also there's no pronoun so even if your hope is fleeting even if you turn if you're turning your back on fate that is you're in you're acting in opposition to what seems to be your destined future, right? 
So it looks like, so I think the two statements together mean it, even if it looks like we have no chance, right? Even if it looks like we cannot possibly win this, Sakara Kachi Areba, if it's worth defying, and I think the implication is the, the fate that we just referenced, if it's worth defying that fate, Sasagara Kokoro, then dedicate your heart to this action, commit to it. If you think it's worth it, even if our chances are slim, you know, then then commit, dedicate yourself to it. Um, and and I think this is the sort of heart of the song, right? And I and I think this is also where it gets a little darker than Road of Resistance. And again, w- w- this is a similar sentiment to things that we've heard elsewhere in baby metal that that it's always about the struggle rather than the possibility of success. But I think the difference here is the sound. Right, that in Road of Resistance is an anthem, and it's clearly positive, and it's clearly uh, uplifting and um, and hopeful. Not so much in the lyric, but in the overall sound. You've got those those soaring guitars, you know, that sort of that that melody that that lifts us up, and then the song has all those sort of frenetic phases, and it's 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 optimistic, you know. And I think here there's less optimism and more defiance. And if I had to explain why, I think a couple of reasons. I think that this is a very contemporary song. If we're revisiting those kind of road of resistance ideas, then we're revisiting them in 2022 after the pandemic, wars, a lot of countries in some serious messed up um, economic, political trouble. I think the world is a little darker than it was. And I think that the song reflects that. And I think that what we're being asked to do is stand up and fight for what we believe in, even though things look grim, because things look grim, right? So there's that element, which I think makes the song a little bit more contemporary. And the other thing, of course, is that the girls have grown up. You know, this is a more mature song. There's something... Part of what I think people love about Road of Resistance is that there's something not not comic, but but cute about the flags and the girls, you know, leading this sort of military charge. I think this song attempts to take that idea a little bit more seriously, and it's a darker version of combat. It's a darker version of what we have to fight for, and it's a more mature take on the thing, as suits these women who are now, you know, in their in their 20s, um, yeah. <laughs> cuts down to half speed and becomes sort of reflective. But yeah, uh, time has come, stand up. Mitai mirai ga aru nara. If there's a future that you want to see, um, it's time to go your way, time to, yeah. Um, tsuki yabure kabe konotere. Break through the wall with your hands. Um, and I, I think, you know, again, with the with the imagery that we're seeing in the video, some of that breaking through is, is also about them breaking out of whatever digital confines they are in, right? We keep seeing this image of of both of them distorted by sort of pixelated and, and such, as if somehow trapped, and, and we're sort of trying to force our way out of that while still within the digital world of the other one, the song. Yeah, let's hear the slow bit. <laughs> Um, so I'll, there's something reminiscent of distortion video and other so we're in that sort of uh, iconic um, fantasy world but here it's very very clearly clearly digital and of course you know some of the f- uh, fan complaint about the song has that is that it sounds 
it sounds digital. Um, uh, I want to think that that's deliberate because it's part of the sort of, in the same way that Sue's voice in Kingslayer is clearly sort of processed in ways it doesn't need to be, but it fits the song, right? It, fit, it fits the, the, the content of that song because of what it's about, that sort of Matrix-esque trapped within a digital world kind of thing. And I think there's something similar going on here. You know, uh, will we get to see these songs played live with a, with a live band that will make the sound more organic and, and rich? Uh, I hope so. Um, but I, I, I still like this. Yes, it, it does have a slightly sort of trebly digitized quality to it. But, you know, it's new baby metal. What do you want? <laughs> so we're now into the sort of reprise stage. <laughs> to go your way kiri hirika michi kanotere open the way with these yeah yeah, yeah. um susume egaite ashite again advance to the tomorrow that you can imagine or that you have imagined and we're opening the way and that's pretty much where we are at the end here i like to see the return of capes capes is good <laughs> see this is what we listen for that that little peak that little unexpected twist that raises the vocal just a couple of notes up beyond where it has been before and gives it that extra little emotional intensity this is what i love <laughs> beat this um okay so where does that leave us I, I, to say something about the title shingeki uh i i was wondering it means divine attack but i, I was wondering is, is is this metaphorical in the same way that say kamikaze uh, divine wind is metaphorical for a particular kind of assault or something but i'm assured that it's not i was asking my my japanese japanese mother-in-law about this and and her research turned didn't turn up anything that suggests that the word has sort of traditional association i i may i stand corrected if that turns out not to be the case but that's what what we think there there is a uh, there was a game called shingeki bahamut which generated a, some sort of anime as well so i i think it, it participates in uh, as is not uncommon for baby metal a, a sort of a shared sense of epic adventure the game was i think subtitled uh, a story of romance and destruction <laughs> so maybe there's something there i don't i'm not sure so where does this leave us i think uh, overall i think that as uh, yeah i've said some of this in the course of the song but let me just clarify and then get to this question of of sue's contribution to the song as a writer so it, it's darker and grittier less anthemic than road of resistance um i think you know sue's voice obviously dominates the absence of the guitar virtuosity and those those soaring solos reinforce a sense that the conflict is perhaps closer more intimate more 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 immediate right rather than this is not a big sort of rousing speech um, with the battle sort of also, almost in the abstract. This feels very sort of close and we're going immediately into combat of some sort. Um, and the emphasis, I think, as I said, is on defiance and standing tough rather than on hope. I think, you know, there were people were worried that this version of baby metal would be you know radically different from the one that we that we know that they would go dark in the sense of going evil <laughs> um I, based on this that is not the case the the sound is is darker 
Um, but th what they stand for, I don't think, has changed. The, the sort of the sense of, of community and resistance and belief in, in the future, that, that sense of optimism is still there. It's the world around it embodied in the sound itself, which I think is, is different. Um, so there's, there's less pageantry here. You can't imagine the sort of flag waving and sort of slightly comic, um, you know, cavalry horse riding stuff that they do in Road of Resistance. This is a, as I said, this is a battle song for a world which has witnessed more hardship, um, more actual war. And, there, and it's also a more mature, mature song. Not an, it, emphasis is not so much on the on the cute. Um, so it's a tonal difference rather than a content difference. Now, as far as this being the first song that Sue is listed as a co-writer. Now, this is cool. Um, I'm, I'm glad to see her becoming a, a creator as well as a performer. Now, I'm not sure it makes that much difference for this particular song in artistic terms because the content here is fairly familiar. If the song was a more clearly personal exploration of new musical or lyrical territory, then I'd be more excited. But but and maybe that will come, you know, if she's going to continue to to participate as a songwriter. Um, and assuming that she's a good songwriter, we don't know. She's credited with two other people here. And you know, I'm torn. I want the, the, the performers, I want Sue and Moa to have more agency. On the assumption, of course, that they can do that. You know, obviously they're great at performing. It's a, singing and presenting the songs. Obviously that's absolutely in their wheelhouse. Are they good songwriters? I don't know. It's like saying we want Moa to play guitar. Well, if she can play, <laughs> you know, we we don't know. Um, so... Uh, we will just have to wait and see now. But what I am excited about is the fact that she's listed as a songwriter for business reasons. Now, let me presage this by saying I don't know the details of their contracts. Nobody does. Nobody out here anyway. But unless their contracts are very strange indeed, to be listed as a co-creator of the song means that she's getting royalties off this song. That means a, uh, she has a share of the song's success. Now, we don't know how their contracts are structured, whether they're paid uh, a sort of annual salary or they're given bonuses for performances or what. They could be hired on a, you know, this is the amount of time you spent in the studio. We're paying you on a sort of hourly rate or something. I, don't, I suspect that's not the case. But effectively, they could be day laborers, you know, um, who are contractually limited to working for this particular management company. Um, we just don't know the intricacies of it and how they are paid. But if she is a co-writer, then that means she ha is part owner of the IP, the, the intellectual property. So she has a share of copyright. This is how songwriters make their money. Every time somebody buys a physical copy of this on CD or something, she gets a cut. Every time it gets played on Spotify or on YouTube, all that advertising revenue that goes to the management company, she will get a cut. Now, it's possible that she signed these rights away, but I think it's unlikely. I think that it means that, that she's making, that she's invested in every sense in the success of this song. And that's a really good thing because it means we're going to get more. Uh, my, again, this is just me speculating, but I think there's at least the possibility of future um, songs coming from them. And the, I think that, you know, this means there's a greater likelihood that baby metal continue to exist, continue to, to, to pr produce new material, because the more Sue and, you know, maybe Moa as well are literally invested in the success of the band, then the more sense it makes for them to stick around. Because the truth is, we don't know. When people are speculating about when they're going to tour again, maybe they don't want to. We just don't know. But this, to me, is a really good sign that there's that there's a source of income that will come from the songs themselves. Every time they're performed, every time they're played on internet or whatever. Yeah, so that's good. There's noise in the background, so I'm going to stop. 
Um, I don't think I have anything else to I mean, you know, this is a fairly hot take because I've only just heard the song a few times. I mean, I've, I've, the more I play it, the more I like it. Um, so yeah, I mean, I, I'm excited. I think this is a really good sign, a good step forward. There's enough of the original Baby Metal that we liked there and just enough of a wrinkle in the, in the sense of direction, uh, enough of a, a twist in the sound to, to, to give us something which is new and cool. I, I'm happy. <laughs> it may not look like it because, you know, it's me, but I am. All right, that's it. So as ever, please like, comment, subscribe, check out my Patreon page, buy a book. And I'll talk to you soon. Bye.